They leave Sumatra and he goes elsewhere. And he, he frankly doesn't know where to look other than somewhere in the East Indies. Two years later, and Dubois has started his search again, this time on the island of Java. And finally, his luck has started to turn. He's fully recovered from malaria, and at last he's got something to look at. Some fossil teeth, which he believes are extremely old and look vaguely ape-like. Dubois now has a new dig site with a bigger team, overseen by the Dutch army. Every so often, they bring him material they think might be of interest. And this day, in October 1891, is one Dubois will never forget. Today's delivery contains a fossilized skull. Just like Neanderthal 40 years earlier, it's only a skull cap, but like Neanderthal, it sends its discoverer into a frenzy of speculation. The surrounding forests are home to a variety of apes. But he knows that this is not from any known ape. It's too fine. The brain cavity is clearly large. Yet, it's obviously not a human skull. So, could it be an early human ancestor, closer to our ape-like origins? The only thing he can compare it to in his mind is Neanderthal. The first Neanderthal found was 40,000 years old. Unknown to Dubois, his find is roughly 20 times older, between half a million and a million years old. And it's more primitive than Neanderthal. But is it any closer to being the missing link? The key, Dubois believes, is the size of the brain. He has a precise mathematical model to determine the missing link. Its brain cavity should be precisely half the size of a human and twice the size of a chimpanzee. But when he calculates the brain cavity of his skull, it's the wrong size. It's too big to fit the halfway point, therefore too big to be the ape-like creature he had imagined. And more evidence emerges from the site, which simply adds to the confusion for Dubois. A complete fossilized leg bone. Its shape suggests its owner stood upright and walked on two legs, like a man. Dubois can't change his evidence, so he changes his model. He decides that the missing link had to have a brain almost as large as our own. And he's so convinced by his meager evidence that he writes to the Dutch colonial government announcing he's found the missing link. He calls it Pithecanthropus erectus, upright walking ape man. If only he could see it. One of the most successful hominid species ever to walk the earth. This is Africa, 800,000 years ago. 
and 10,000 miles from where Dubois found his upright walking ape. Yet this is the same species, today called Homo erectus, upright walking man. They've been able to colonize Africa, Asia, and beyond thanks to a unique combination of physical and mental qualities. Standing at around six feet, their bodies are similar in shape to our own, and their brains are about two-thirds the size of ours. Homo erectus are on the verge of becoming human. And one of the main reasons for this is diet because for the first time in our evolution, we have access to the concentrated protein of meat. Yet there is no evidence that Homo erectus is a true hunter. The antelope has most likely been scavenged from a leopard kill, the spears used to drive away the predator. It's believed that our bodies have also been going through some radical changes. For the first time in our evolution, body hair is disappearing. Partly because Homo erectus skin has developed complex sweat glands. This also removes the need to pant in the heat, allowing voices to develop and paving the way for human speech. But it's their stone tools that show how advanced Homo erectus have become. We find the appearance of a thing called the hand axe, which has been called the, the Swiss army knife of the Paleolithic. This is a multi-purpose tool. It's shaped uh, very consistently, worked on both sides, worked very skillfully, and erectus developed that um, certainly close to one and a half million years ago. So this was a big advance in technology. These people are part of a larger group, the beginnings of a tribe. But they stay together as a tight-knit family. And there is evidence that they have learned to care for each other through sickness and injury. The leg bone which Dubois found in Java had an unusual scar, showing clear traces of damage and repair. It's incredible. It seems to have broken at one point and healed. So whoever it was that owned this leg not only was severely injured, but repaired it in their own lifetime. And that's important because if you broke your leg out in the wild, you'd be dead. You'd have no chance of survival, except if you were with a family, if you were with a village, if you were in a society. There's a family system around that individual. There is safety within the family, but the family itself is never far from danger. Leopards use these same rock shelters. As darkness approaches, they will become vulnerable. Spears or no spears. And a storm is brewing in the hot afternoon that could bring an unwelcome predator in search of shelter. But this storm will bring something else. A new weapon that will shift the balance of power between our ancestors and their competitors. one of the most important pieces in the human evolutionary puzzle. A gift from nature. 